Welcome you all. I am Dr. PJ Madam Rafi. Today we are going to discuss about amino glycosides. Okay. So regarding amino glycoside, amino glycoside is a bacterial cell agent. It binds to 30s ribosome. It inhibits protein synthesis, mainly initiation process. How means by formation of polygons, which cause misreading of mRNA code. Okay. Thereby it will inhibit initiation of protein synthesis. Amino glycoside will exhibit concentrated and dependent killing effect. So we have to give in high dose. Next they also show post antibiotic effect. Okay. Next these amino glycosides have uh, effective against gram negative organism including pseudomonas. That's why these are effective drugs. But except salmonella we can't use in against salmonella. For salmonella what is the drug of size? Ceftriaxone. Okay. So inactive, it is inactive against anaerobes also. It is inactive against anaerobes and salmonella. So uh, resistance enzymes. How the amino glycosides will get resistance by following enzymes? What are what are what are those? Estelite, phosphorylate, adenylate. Okay. These are the three enzymes. By these enzymes, the amino glycosides will, will show resistance. That is acetylate, phosphorylate, and adenylate. Examples of amino glycosides will be streptomycin. Gentamicin, Kanamycin, Amikacin, Sisomycin, Neomycin, Netrimycin. Okay. Next, coming to the pharmacokinetics of, uh, regarding amino glycosides. These drugs are not absorbed orally, so we have to give IV form or parental form only, and it doesn't cross blood-brain barrier. Okay. Next thing is these drugs excited to kidney. So in renal patient, we have to be very cautious when you are, when you are using in renal patients. Okay. Next. Uses of amino glycosides. First is streptomycin. Streptomycin is the first line drug for treatment of tuberculosis, plague, and tularemia. Next is amikacin. Amikacin is second line injectable drug in multi drug resistance TB. Okay. Next, topical agents like topical infections or superficial infection will use neomycin or framycetin. Okay. These are the topical agents as used as a ointments or products forms. Next, in the uh, we, uh, last class, we, last slide we will discuss, right? Amino glycoside will develop resistance by firm enzyme, that is acetylate, those enzymes, right? So, some drugs are effective against in those resi enzymes also, those are amikacin and nitrimycin. That is, these drugs are effective against enzyme resistance amino glycosides, okay? Next is newer development, that is spectinomycin. This spectinomycin is used in single dose treatment of Pencilness producing Neisseria gonorrhea. Okay, this is an MCQ. Spectinomycin will be this is separate drug. Okay, this is separately used in PPNG that is Pencilness producing Neisseria gonorrhea. Next important regarding amino glycosides is adverse effects. Okay, they have severe adverse effects that is ototoxicity, vestibulotoxic, nephrotoxic, neuromuscular blockade, and myocardial infraction. Different drugs will cause different toxicity. Ototoxicity mainly by amikacin. Okay, if we are mostly go with ototoxin is streptomycin, but streptomycin also auto, it is a ototoxic also, but it is specifically vestibulotoxic. Okay, we are we mostly go with ototoxin means streptomycin. No, streptomycin is a vestibulotoxic, amikacin is a ototoxic drug. Okay, next nephrotoxin will be neomycin mostly, next will be followed by gentamicin. Next neuromuscular blockade by blocking acetylcholine. So, what are the drugs? Neomycin first, followed by gentamicin. Next is Macular infection in ophthalmic patient, if you are giving intravitreal injection of gentamicin, it will lead to cause macular infraction. Okay. These are the major adverse effects regarding amino glycosides and these are mostly repeated in MCQIs in all national exams. Okay. So this is regarding amino glycosides. That's all. Thank you.